Welcome to a game showcase on a game that is near and dear to my heart, Gemcraft. So this is actually, gosh, I guess this is the third one, even though it says chapter two. Maybe it's the fourth one, actually. Um, but this is the Chasing Shadows uh, installment of this series. So in front of you, you're going to see the Scythe Gate, and in the far distance is a very ominous looking mountain or structure with a shield around it. Hopefully, through a playthrough, if you guys are interested, I can show you all of the lore about this game. This is a tower defense game, and whether you realize it or not, I know that we have some younger viewers on the channel, this was available on Armor Games. You can actually see their logo right here. And it's also produced by Game in a Bottle, and you can see that this is a 2014-2015 thing, so it's, it's kind of older, but... Uh, they are coming out with a new game, I believe, either by the end of the summer or early fall that should be out. It's called Frostborn Wrath, which completely changes a lot of the aspects of this game. And I hope to show you a little bit about it today. So let's jump in. You can see that I have a few saves already. Um, my wizard level, 11,394. That's the one that I had played on so many times. Uh, Iron Wizard. I think it's something that I had started, hadn't gotten too far, and then this one over here is something that I had just started yesterday, or oh, I guess two days ago now. Um, but I just got into it a little bit just to kind of remind myself of how fun this game really is, and it's not all that expensive. I will have to leave a link in the description to where you can get it. It's only available on Steam, I believe, so for your PC folks, you're in luck. Everybody else, I think, is just going to have to wait uh, because this is definitely a mouse and keyboard game that you'll be playing. But I will start a new save down here in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, can't name the saves or anything. You just have to remember what they are. This is old school. Well, not super old school, but old school enough. So this will go over the basics. It's just a tutorial, and I plan to go through, I don't know, five, seven levels today. It shouldn't be too, too long. But anyway, click the button to select gem type of your first gem. And click the inventory row to create your gem. So you see that we've created a gem right here, and so we're just going to drag it over to our tower to socket the gem. There's going to be an arrow here, and as soon as I click this, the rest of the screen is going to fill out, and here you go. This is what you see at the beginning of each battle, as it is. Um, now, since I know a little bit more about this game, uh, as soon as this wave is through, uh, I'm going to do something a little bit unconventional. I'm going to mix two gems together. And you can see that each one of these gems has a different effect based on the color of it. So this one, Leech's Mana, which is something that you're going to use uh, creating gems, casting spells, some spells, uh, leveling up gems, all of that. Purple is going to reduce armor. You can see on these, uh, each one of them is going to have an armor level, speed, hit points, and then they do heal over time. So just because you do damage up front doesn't mean they can't heal down the line and get to your orb. In uh, standard tower defense fashion, you want to kill everything before it gets to your orb. Uh, and then also, the green gems are poison. So they will create poison damage over time. But this one's just a mixture of both. And you could see that dual gem modifiers give it plus 20% damage, but only 70% of each of the special's power. So we'll continue going with this. I'm just going to speed it up because I know that these will be plenty to handle it. And I'll uh, speed this up a little bit. It's okay if one or two get through. Those gems should take care of them. Um, but I will... Oops. Start doing some of this. You can also drop them as bombs. Just see, we'll create these little wasps that are left over. I'm just trying to get all the achievements that I can to get some extra skill points to show you guys some of the cool stuff early on. So that's what a battle looks like. You can see the total battle XP is only 85 but early on, that's uh, that's enough to level you up a couple of times. Anyway, check out some of these lore pages here. I was in the possession of the Forgotten for months, carrying her within myself. We wandered through the wilderness towards the Spirit Forge, the last stand of wizardry, the place she seemed er, she seems to want to get to so desperately. I still can't believe my trap worked, but it did. It split us apart and knocked me unconscious. Whether she didn't find me afterwards or didn't want to waste time on killing me, I don't know. But she's gone now, and probably the first wizard ever to sur survive her possession. <clears throat> this happened at least three days ago. Fortunately, the trap, or as I call it, the scythe gate, interesting because that's what you see at the, the title screen here, 
dropped me near my old wizard tower just as I had planned. After decades spend, spent hiding and watching, I'm home again. She is days ahead of me, though. There's no time to waste. I must hurry and assist the gem bearer. We have to set up a trap with the gem before she gets to the spirit forge, which is what you saw in the distance there. Anyway, all of these achievements you'll see you'll get um, three shadow cores, which those will be useful in the future. I'll show you those a little bit too. And then also a token for a field. And so that's what each battle is called. Battle field, get it? Um, <laughs> I know, not, not very original, but... We're going to click on the next field token, and you can see each one of these, you have certain gems that are available to you. So here we had the mana leeching, poison, and armor tearing. This one, we have chain hit and slowing. And each gem is very good on its own, but combined with others, you can make some really cool combinations. So we can also build towers. So I'll just build another one here, just to show you that we can. Now you'll see that these trees and stuff around them you can't build towers directly next to them you can even build on the path as long as it's not blocking monsters from coming through so let's throw that in there and we'll throw a blue one as well we'll just start the battle and i tend to like speeding this up a little bit now very early on you're gonna see how easy easily these monsters are taken down just within one shot Maybe two shots in some cases. So this chain hit, I'll explain what these do very briefly. Chain hit is going to extend the damage done to nearby enemies. But it only extends so much damage or if the enemies are so close. So if you have a two chain hit length, it is almost certainly going to hit that second enemy. A 1.24 chain hit length is really not very far at all. You may not even touch that second enemy right there if that were to be hit. And of course, the blue gems are gonna get slower. They're just gonna slow, and you can see kinda has like a little frost thing. Uh, and of course, they tell you what they are whenever you're creating them. Actually, back here, I'm gonna throw another chain hit gem. And then this, I'm gonna combine. I'm using keyboard shortcuts too, so I just know that G is to combine gems. So we have this dual one right here, but this should be plenty. I'm gonna send a couple of these waves forward pretty quick. You can also see that the rain is gonna do extra damage to these. Let me see if I can click on one. Uh, yeah, rain times 1.23 increased damage taken. So if you do 100 damage, it's gonna add 23 damage on top of that. That's what that means. We also found a talisman fragment. We'll check that out in a second, too. So you see we've gotten significantly more XP on this level because there were more waves, more monsters to kill, more gems to create. Uh, we spent more mana, we gathered more mana. But we can see that this fragment here has a trait to it. So plus 3% of wizard level goes to initial XP and mana. And more shadow cores as well. So we'll go back to the map, and we'll go check out our talisman here. Oh, it wants me to check out my skills first. So every time you level up, you get seven skill points per level, which is great. You can use them on just about anything, really. Uh, unspent skill points give you initial mana, but it's not always worth spending your skill points. Decide wisely. So at first, I'm just going to put two into each one of these. So you see that um, this is going to add mana per ma monster kill. This is going to reduce the cost of our gems. And this is going to reduce the cost of our buildings. Actually, I think I'm going to level all of these up to three. Because this sockets gems faster. This reduces the cost of combining. And this uh, lowers pool milestones, which I'll show you in just a second. Ah, talisman. I meant to go do that. Hold on. We're going to back out of this and we'll go to the talisman as soon as it loads up. Oh, traps. Okay. I'll show you traps in a second, too. Uh, yes. Return to the map. Talisman. Here we go. So you can socket these various fragments to gain battle bonuses, and you can spend these shadow cores to upgrade them. And of course, you can also destroy them, uh, destroy each fragment to get uh, these cores back. So this is that thing that we get there. It's not going to be too important right now. 
Also, this is only a rarity level six, you can see. We can upgrade it twice. It's probably not worth it right now, especially because it's gonna cost almost all of our cores just to upgrade it once. Um, but this will be much more important once we get up to like level 100, wizard level 100, and basically three of those are going to go back, well, in a percentage fashion, is going to go back to our initial XP that we gain from each battle and mana that we can spend at the beginning of each battle. I know this is a lot to take in right now. There are a ton of different achievements. I have no idea how many, but there are a lot. So there are still 410 locked achievements. I've unlocked eight, <laughs> so 418 total, and I'm sure there are secrets in there too. So we're gonna go back into this field F3, and this is going to introduce, introduce us bleh, to traps. If only I could speak. And so here we have a new gem type. This is a critical hit gem. So each shot has a chance to inflict multiplied damage, which is very low at first. You'll see 11% chance to deal times 1.35 damage. It's not a whole lot more damage, but when you get up to like a 30% chance of dealing four times damage, that's where the sweet spot is. Um, but first, I'm gonna throw these in. I'm gonna upgrade that. We'll, eh, we'll drop that one in too. So in traps, it's, you're only doing 20% of the damage that it would normally do outside of a trap. So this is like 17 to 42, and of course, it's not very comparable. Um, this is only 3 to 7, and this, they're both grade 2. Obviously, that's a dual gem type, so it's going to do a little bit more damage. But what you really get is these specials. So plus 26 poison damage over 2 seconds, um, and that is significantly more. And it also fires a lot faster. So these are going to hit... Uh, not as hard, but they're going to do a lot more specials damage. So this really isn't worth anything in a trap right now, so we'll just take it out. We'll fast forward a little bit just to get some monsters through. Some of these battles can take upwards of 20 minutes to half an hour, some of the later ones. I, I know that <laughs> that first save that you had seen there, where I had done a lot with it. Um, I didn't mean to upgrade that, I meant to duplicate it. Whoops. Anyway, it's upgraded, so we have 47 poison damage, and you can see each one of these only has 10 health, so basically one hit is death for any of these Reavers that come through. I'll put a second one right there, just in case we don't catch any on the first run, first pass of that little one. I think we're good to keep going here. I'll call another wave forward real quick. Yeah, this... This little uh, gate that we have here is really going to be taking down some of these monsters pretty fast. In this way, you can just have these gates set up along the path in areas where you might not be able to build towers. Like, we really can't build any towers on here. I mean, of course, we could build it where the monsters are walking, but only up to a certain point. But this makes it very useful to use some of your lower tier gems to deal a lot of damage, especially poison and, well, a couple of other ones that you'll see later on. Just in case anything gets through. We can also enrage some waves. So this is going to have plus four m monsters, uh, more HP for all the monsters, and more armor for all the monsters. <clears throat> I also apologize, I'm a little under the weather. I think I'm still a little bit stuffed up from, uh, from yesterday. And there we go, that's it. So these are relatively quick. I think this is funny. Have more than 75% of the monster kills due to poison. All right, more shadow cores. We have another interesting looking token here, and then just a standard F5 token. Get a couple more levels out of this. Yeah. So we'll go and we'll just add one. So we're only starting with 70 initial mana, but it's enough for now uh, that it's, it's going to be useful later. Let me check. Sorry, my phone just buzzed. Just want to make sure it's not anybody super important. Um, we'll do this one first. This is the site of a wizard tower, and this could be very interesting. I forget exactly what this unlocks. Anyway, 
This wizard tower will destroy your orb unless you disable all the locks. So we're just going to place some gems and towers around these. And these are each going to take 30 tower shots. Or this one's going to take 40. That one's going to take 30. But they're going to take some tower shots to unlock. So I'll throw one up here. Um, let's put up a, one of these. And it probably would have been better for that anyway. Let's just swap these around. <laughs> We're just going to ignore that because this one fires faster. You can see how many shots per second it puts out. And again, we'll speed this up just to get some monsters through. Throw that one there as well. Maybe just do a little bit of damage up front. Also, you can create walls to uh, send them back around. That'll be useful for when we want to put something a little bit more powerful down in there. We're going to upgrade that one. You can see we're not doing so hot right now. But we can always drop a gem bomb on some of these guys. I'll drop another one, just to be sure. It's not the end of the world if you let them get to your orb. I'll actually show you what happens. So see, I have 763 mana right there. It's going to come down a little bit. And then I think, yeah, that monster just comes right back through. It's just going to banish it back to the beginning of the map. So it's not the end of the world, but you want to try to avoid it as much as you can. Because it's going to really save you a headache later on. These. Actually, first I'm going to move that to there. Then I'll combine it with one of these. There we go. That should have coverage for most of the surrounding area. And there we go. Wizard Tower unlocked. Now all we have to do is survive this wave. So I'm going to combine that with that. We'll leave this kind of as is for right now. And we can always move gems around or create more depending on where we need them. Also, I said I was going to explain the mana pool um, <laughs> later, but I'm explaining it now. You can see here that it says level 1, next level at 1,152 mana. So we're going to just let this run. And you see, we just upgraded it just by letting it collect. So sometimes it's better to hold on to your mana than spend it right away as soon as you get it. Because you can see that we have an XP gain multiplier, a stream skill gain multiplier, which that was already up, I think, a little bit. But then just a general mana gain multiplier of times 1.04. And that's not a ton now, but once you get up to like level 8, 9, 10, that really starts to affect how much you have coming through. We're just going to keep letting this run. So some of these are getting a little further than I'm comfortable with. So I'm going to put up another tower there, duplicate that, and then upgrade both of those. This should provide a great level of frontline defense. There we go. You can see how some of these differ slightly. They have There's a little bit of RNG that you have going on here. So this one, its damage is 38 to 114. This is 37 to 114. And the only difference at the bottom there is hits and kills, which will be important for certain gem types. By the way, these little guys, they're called Swarmlings. The regular guys are called Reavers. So I'll send a wave of those real quick too. Reavers, Swarmlings. Swarmlings have significantly less health and armor, but they tend to be a little bit faster, and there are a ton of them per wave. You can see over here, that's 54 Swarmlings. That's 11 Reavers. So we're kind of getting our butts handed to us right now. So I'm going to duplicate this, throw it up there, and upgrade it. That way we can catch anything that comes through. That shouldn't be coming through. There we go. Takes care of that. So you see we're getting achievements just on the regular. And these are just some early game ones. Nothing to be too concerned about. And we got a ton of these little swarmlings again. Bunch of squashing noises. Bunch of blood on the ground. 
Oh, we got a ton here. All right, so five shadow cores, pretty good. A long abandoned tower of a fellow wizard. After the summoning of the forgotten and the demonic outbreak that followed, most of the wizards fell back to the spirit forge. In a hurry, they only had time to add locks to guard their towers from monsters and demons. So that's basically what we just unlocked, and we uh, opened up this haste battle trait scroll. Another uh, fragment too. This is another like percentage of wizard level goes to XP and mana thing. A couple new hex tiles as well, and two new tokens. That was a heck of a lot of levels right there. Anyway, so now you can see that we have different map tiles. We can zoom out, zoom in, uh, move it around a little bit. But as far as I'm concerned, let's throw this into our talisman and get going. This will be the last level that I do on this showcase. But if I see a bunch of positive reviews, I will make sure to leave a link in the description and maybe do a couple more videos on this. And I'll show you what my wizard level 11,000 looks like uh, after I'm done here. So I'm taking a look at this. This looks like a good one because this introduces another concept uh, that you guys can't tell just by looking at the map, but I can. So let's open it up uh, after we upgrade a couple of our skills. We might as well. And we're still starting with an extra 238 mana, even with all five in each of those categories. So this will be the last one here. So battle traits can make your uh, battles more challenging, but they also give huge XP multipliers. Uh, and they also upgrade the chance for talisman fragments. So you can see, uh, as I upgrade this, it started from 1 to 20, but now it's up to 1 to 22. We're actually going to take this just a 2 right now. Um, and that's going to add uh, another 0.6%. Well, I guess another 60% onto our XP multiplier uh, here. So we'll just start the battle. And you can get, I think there are nine total. I think it was a three by three grid that I just saw there. There are nine total, and each one of them is hard in their own right. I think this just makes the waves go through a little bit faster. Anyway, take a look at this. You can see that we actually start with a couple of different gems, but these are amplifiers. You can place towers near them to upgrade and kind of amplify the gem's traits. So I'll give you a, a cool example of this right here. So you see that, oh, we got an achievement for amplifying a gem, of course we did. So you can see that plus two to minimum damage, plus five to maximum damage, range and shots per second, all of those are amplified, but if I put in the same color, you'll see that it also is going to amplify how much armor is just shredded off there, plus 0.26 to armor tearing, which will be very useful in the future. This one over here, I think we're going to start, we're gonna start by making it one of these. I actually wanna switch these around a little bit. You can see this isn't very far right now, but we can get it a little bit more far reaching in the future. Let's speed this up a little bit. We also have a monster nest here. Um, that we can destroy, but it's just going to output more monsters. And for right now, more XP is, is going to be better if we can fend them off. So another thing that I'm looking at here is we're really close. There we go. Once we hit that. And then I think we'll put another one of these over here. That should increase the range a little bit. You can also increase or decrease the range by using your scroll wheel. So if you just want this gem to cover a small little area, it can just cover that small little area. But for most of the time, you're going to want it at 100% range if you can get it there. So we have 13 waves here. That's the last wave right there. You'll start to notice, oh, we just got a talisman fragment. You'll start to notice that we're getting a little bit overwhelmed. So I'm just going to combine this with that. And then here, I'll also combine that. So this is going to give us more for both categories. So it's going to slow more, and it's going to reduce the armor level more. <clears throat> Again, you'll have to excuse me. I'm still a little bit under the weather <clears throat> from the other day. You also have different sparks that come onto the battlefield. This is uh, one that decreases the building cost of uh, certain buildings. So walls, 
towers, amplifiers go right here, and those traps are going to go right there as well. We'll just send that right now. I think we're in a pretty good position. Oh, yeah. So we're going to upgrade this again. There. That's just a grade 5. So we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is the perfectly cut gem. And, of course, you can go a little bit higher than that as well. And it'll just start showing the, uh, the numbers in the upper right-hand corner there. But for now, we can really only go up to 5 because of our mana restriction. And we'll just send these along pretty quick. So that's the basics of this game so far. There are going to be some spells and stuff that you can cast out, which are really cool. This token right here is going to get us another, uh, another skill trait. This is just a straight EXP gain too, which is really nice. So we'll socket that in our talisman, and then I think we will end the episode here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this game spotlight. Uh, I really, really like this game, and I would be totally willing uh, if somebody's playing on PC, and they're like, hey, I really want to get into this game too, um, I'd be willing to drop the link down in the description. This could also be a future giveaway, because I think it's about 10 bucks on Steam, which is cheap for a Steam game with as much content as this has. It's not just three of these hex tiles. I think there are like 30-some, and it goes, I mean, we're pretty limited here in the view that we have. But you can see this outer edge. We can't even see one corner of this map. Uh, this goes way, way, way far out uh, to the right and down. And a little bit to the, the up, upper left as well. So we're starting kind of on the left-ish side of the map. But it definitely continues all the way to the right. And you can see here kind of the tracks that this leads you to uh, for some of the main missions. And these will expand as we get more of these uh, little field tokens but anyway thank you so much for joining make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed let me know in the comments below whether you've played any gemcraft games before if you like this game if you want to see more of it i'd be totally interested to find out like i said i know some of you are younger viewers i don't know if you guys have as much experience on armor games or some of these tower defense games which i know have kind of gone out of style in the past few years but i think that there are a lot of really cool elements of this uh that you all would enjoy so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye